Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about growing grapes. Now if you're a typical homeowner, you can just plant your grapevine on an arbor like I did here. Maybe two grapevines and they'll give you enough grapes, you know, for a few handfuls, maybe a bucketful per year. But if you really want to grow grapes, you've got to upgrade to this. Let me start by showing you how I did the end posts. So this is the main end post. It's a six inch diameter treated post. I got it buried two feet underground. And then I've got a second bracing post put in the ground at an angle, again buried about two feet. And then joining these two posts into one solid structure, I've got a horizontal post. And the way that I connected these is by drilling through this post and then pounding a rebar through this hole into the horizontal post, almost like a big nail. To further strengthen this, I took the nine gauge galvanized wire and I twisted it into a loop coming from the main post to the bracing post at an angle. And then you put a twitch stick in here and you just start twisting it around until it locks up like this. Locks up like that against the horizontal post. What you end up with is a really incredibly strong end post bracing. And then of course we've got the trellis wire. It's one single wire. I've got it wrapped around the bracing post with a staple, a heavy staple in the post. And then this is a little crimp that you can get just for this wire. And then I run this nine gauge wire all the way down to the opposite end braced posts. And then on each trellis line, I've put a ratchet strainer. Now the ratchet strainer works like this. You wind the main wire through here and then whenever it starts to sag, you can tighten it by turning this and it'll ratchet, tighten up and ratchet so that your grapevines never sag. Coming down the trellis line from the end post bracing, you'll see I've got a post about every 20 feet. And then right next to the post, here's the trunk of the vine. Now, the trunk of the vine, when you first plant this, it's a little tiny plant. And then I have a guide wire going up so that you're training the grapevine to come up. And anytime you get these little side things, you pluck them off, you prune them. And then when it reaches the top, you wanna bifurcate this into two so that one arm's gonna go this way, one arm's gonna go this way. Coming off the main horizontal arm, which runs for about 10 feet in either direction, are canes. These are the new shoots of the year. And you see that this shoot right here is about three or four feet long. By the end of the season, all of these shoots are gonna be basically touching the ground. And this is where your grapes grow. The grapes grow on those shoots, on those canes. Coming away from a post, I let the vine arms get about 10 feet long. And then at 10 feet, I might have a little bit of overlap, but I would basically cut them right here. And I've put a little stake in the ground to show me where the 10 foot mark is. You can see that I got really good growth this year. These actually need to be pruned so that all of the energy goes into these grapes, which aren't ripe yet. They got about another month. These are muscadine grapes growing in South Carolina. Now I've got 25 vines growing in here and I get well over a thousand pounds of grapes per year. But I make a lot of wine, make a lot of jam, jelly, juice, and also for fresh eating. And one more thing I wanted to show you, each row is a hundred feet long. And the other thing is down here, I've got mulch on top of weed block fabric. So there's weed block fabric right there. And I've got the dirt mounted up underneath that. And that just basically helps keep the weeds out without using any type of herbicides. I've left a good 10 feet in between the rows so I can get my lawnmower down here and I just keep it nice and short, the grass, and all those roots are growing all through this turf. And I don't use fertilizer after the second or third year. And if they look like they're suffering a little bit in terms of not having enough fertilizer, I might give them a little boost. But other than that, they're pretty idiot proof and I can't imagine living without my muscadine grapes.